So we're at the end of my first month towards my goal of making $100,000 worth of pottery, and it went about how I pictured, which is to say, slow. In my last video, I detailed how I planned my schedule and my goals, so I was throwing a lot of numbers and instructions at you. This time I'm going to try and be a bit more casual, and you're going to get to see some of my studio process. As a recap, I set my current calendar to end on August 17th, the start of the New York Renaissance Fair, which is my biggest show. And my goals in that time are to have made $20,000 in online sales and have $50,000 worth of inventory ready for the fair. January was slow, first because I was still coming out of the holiday funk, but also because we had a planned vacation at the end of the month. Out of the 79 days off that I gave myself until August, I used 12 of them in January. Most of those were travel days, but some were lazy days or more likely chore days to get things done around the house. I worked 19 days in January, so what did I do? I had a lot of people asking for some of my Renaissance Fair bottles towards the end of the year, and of course I always want to be stocked with dragon mugs, so those two things were my top priorities. actually just finished them and they're in the store now. I also like to experiment during January, so I decided to give my mindfulness mugs a new paint job. 2023 was the first year where I had several people call my mindfulness mugs rainbow mugs, even though they were glazed in earth tones. I can see what they mean, the labyrinth does have a lot of arcing shapes, so I decided to give it a try and paint them with a rainbow design. I wasn't totally happy with my first prototype, so I decided to test another glaze combination and make sure that it was easy enough to glaze. Because I knew I was going on vacation, I wanted to be able to make sales while I was gone, so I set up a pre-order for the new Rainbow Mindfulness mugs. I always say that I hate pre-orders and that I'm never going to do them again, and then I always do them again. It's because I convinced myself that I learned my lesson from last time and of course I can do it better this time. And I'm going to tell you right now that I believe that again. <laughs> My biggest tip is that simplicity is key. In the past, I've given way too many options for customization, which causes a lot of problems when a very specifically designed piece doesn't come out right and you have to start it all over again. This time, I only let my customers pick the mug size and the handle placement. The public pre-order ended in January, but if you want a rainbow mug of your own, they are the Patreon exclusive pre-order for February, and you can join my Patreon for as little as $3. I'll have the link in the description. A lot of January was focused on restocking my store after it got empty during the holidays, but it was also a lesson on how to track my time. About halfway through the month, I set up a big whiteboard calendar with goals for my online and my Ren Faire inventory, and some extra sections to keep track of my to-do list. I started January by just quickly tracking my tasks in Google Docs, but now that I have a better idea of how to categorize my tasks, I'm going to make a more formal timesheet for February. In my last video, I estimated that out of the days I work in clay, about one out of every three is spent throwing, and the other two days are spent trimming, sculpting, carving, and just generally finishing the pottery. I was happy to see that I was pretty spot on with that estimate. In January, I spent about 10 hours throwing, including setting up and cleaning up my throwing sessions. And I spent about 26 hours doing all the other tasks to finish a piece. My last video also set the goal of throwing 48 mugs per throwing session, but I really only did that once. The other four days that I threw, I did in smaller batches, but I also worked on other things in the studio too. Whereas the 48 mug day was simply devoted to throwing. I threw 114 pieces this month, which accounts to about 2.3 throwing sessions if I was basing it off of that 48 mug goal. My average workday in January was about four hours long, but some of those days were like one hour days and some were nine hour days. I do want to get that average a little closer to six hours per day because, of course, with the more time spent in the studio, the more things that I can make and reach my goals faster. Like I said before, January was really focused on restocking the online store, but I did set a couple thousand dollars of inventory away for the Ren fair, so that feels good. But in February and beyond, I really want to work at a pace where I don't have to glaze and then fire things immediately. I'd love to get a back stock of bisqueware so that I can glaze just a single color combination, but of multiple pieces. 
because it saves so much time to not have to switch between different colors while you're glazing. And to be honest, glazing is my least favorite part of the pottery making process. I also wanna get a big backstock of small pieces like spoon rests, ring dishes, and fairy pots. If you don't know what those are, they're teeny tiny bottled vases about the size of a fairy that are one of my most popular pieces at the Renaissance Fair. They're a great thing for someone to grab if they can't get a full mug right now, and kids really love them. I wanna build up a stock of these small things so that I can use them as space fillers in the kiln so that each firing can be as efficient as possible. I think next week I'm gonna try and throw 200 to 300 fairy pots in one day. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna see if I make that goal. How did your January go? Did you hop right back into work or did it take you a while to get into the swing of things? If you sell at shows, when's your first one this year and how early do you have to start preparing for it? I hope you're feeling good in the studio and I'll see you in the February wrap up video. Thanks for watching, bye.